Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 19th June 2024. Around the virtual table we have myself Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, Bruno and Kevin are not there, and Jay. Chair ready. Up. Let me. Jay Franco 999. I'm using the GitHub handle for now, and we will work on uh, the discourse handle later. OK, so let's get started with announcements. So today is a weekly release day, and the release is special. That will be the first release of Jenkins requiring GDK 17 to be executed. Under the hood, it also features um, now, JDK 17 for building the image, of course, if we require a runtime of 17, but also a new Maven version. We have upgraded from 3.8 something to 3.9 something. Of course, we upgraded yesterday, so that was the day for a brand new release of Maven 3.9.8, so we will update it next week. <laughs> and that will be a way for us to see if the update CLI automated process works. Well, and, and I am pleased to say that I'm already deployed Maven 3.9.8 throughout my cluster and it's working great. So, cool. so it's, it, we, when we get to that next week, all the better. It's good check. The, the change log is uh, short, but there is one big interesting element is they, they introduced the Maven build daemon 100. That's the same as the, as the Gradlu uh, daemon. So that's the daemon for developer that runs on the machine that has a lot of uh, pre-compiled classes, dependencies, so it optimizes. So if you run a lot of builds in your IDS as developer, that's a really a huge time investment. For the infrastructure that could be worth on agents such as permanent agent. For ephemeral agents, that's the same pattern as what we had. Uh, no, no value unless that proved to be something else because they might want to use it as a kind of super ACP, a super artifact caching and classes proxy. So that could be worth for a wing up. But right now it's the 100, so clearly not production ready. Yeah, unless you so they introduced it in a in a minor release in a in a patch release, a dot eight. I huh. think it's not built out of the box. Ah, okay. I think it was already there and then they just updated it to 100. So I'm not sure if you need an experimental flag or something, but I saw it was released at the same day. So I believe the patch introduces API changes to work with it at least. Thanks. So the release, back to the Jenkins release, uh, the release started with the proper Maven and GDK version. We controlled that so one or one half earlier when it started. Right now, it's currently running tests. We don't expect tests to fail because we run them with the same GDK version on CI since days, even weeks. So the problematic area will be the end of the release, that when the automated process will do the Maven prepare release and Maven perform release steps, which will take care of the updating POMXML versions, creating Git commits, pushing the commits and the artifacts that whole area might be impacted by the Maven upgrade. But the, regarding the GDK upgrade, we don't know until the world bill will be published. So that will be a kind of surprise. I hope it should be good, but yeah, I trust the work has been already done. So I'm not worried about the GDK part, more the Maven part. Additionally, uh, thanks to Hervé's work, uh, the. Jenkins weekly Docker images won't be published for the weekly line starting from today. So thanks, Hervé. And more than that, they will keep being published for the LTS. We uh, the, the, the Docker image is always building the latest version, but thanks to Hervé's work, there is an auto detection if it's LTS or weekly, you select the GDK 11 or not. And this until end of October. So thanks everyone involved on all these tasks. I believe everyone here have worked hard on this one. So crossing fingers, but uh, thanks for the help you hold it, the five of you. Anything else, any questions? Nope, okay. Um, 
announcement. We have the new mirror from Mostico. Uh, just wanted to mention that they sent us a message last week, right after we published the blog post. So blog post published. I wanted to, to show them something. Um, they said they underestimated greatly the amount of hits that it will generate. So most probably because of the Russian network issue, all Russian um, originated requests are blocked on the Aachen mirror, which is the closest in terms of network. So Ostico is taking that load now. Um, so they asked if they could only restrict to only a country or an area. Uh, I have to answer them, no, alas. Either they have a non-blocked mirror or they stop sponsoring us. Uh, that's why I wanted to have the blog post published so we can share with them that we are communicating. Uh, that means we also have to quickly find a solution uh, in terms of infrastructure if they don't want to sponsor us anymore, um, mainly for the Russian users. Uh, we have different solutions. Uh, as Stefan mentioned, we have a uh, uh, so OVH, for instance, has data centers in Poland. Azure also has Poland, a Poland data center. So we might have to think about spinning up a virtual machine soon and quickly that would act as a mirror. Uh, at least for one or two months in Azure as a short-term solution because we could use the sponsor the credits for that. Uh, then we will have to find another solution. Digital Ocean only have Amsterdam, but if Ostico stops using us, I believe Amsterdam might be picked by the Russian user without being sure. But at least that will be another solution. Uh, maybe by manipulating the geolocation of the Aachen Mirror, we could move them Western virtually. Uh, but yeah, important part is um, uh, the Ostico part, and for the Russian user, I still have to write the issue with all of this information that I'm seeing aloud. Uh, uh, OVH Poland requires new sponsor, Digital Ocean Amsterdam. Um, it has been mentioned that Yandex has a non-official mirror. That's also worth contacting them, as we said last week. Is there any question on these two topics? Or the proposal to sustain our Russian users? Someone just deleted what I just wrote. What happened? Or is it my... Sorry, no, that was me. I was trying to be cooperative editing and I properly chose the exact opposite direction. Can you redo my my mistake, undo my mistake? I'm not sure I can. Could you try Common um, Z on your I'll own? just... Uh, uh, it's, I, uh, nope, undo is not there. Sorry, Damien. I'll, no problem. Let me retype it and I'll put it in. Oh, Or oh, oh, I can take the opportunity to write down the... The issue after okay. the, that. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. My, That's the perks of collaborative editing. Well, and HackMD told me I was offline, and in bringing it online, it offered to resolve the conflict. And I said to apply the changes, <laughs> and it said, "Oh, okay. Well, that means you want to delete these things." I mean, that's an efficient way to resolve conflict on a distributed yeah, that system. Is terrible. <laughs> Removing that. Sorry data. about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, do you have other announcements, folks? I don't have it either, so let's continue. Okay. Next week, oh, sorry, someone was going Maybe to Maybe a something. little bit, uh, if you want to to have a little preview on the new stats that Jenkins at IO, you can look at the previews on the pull request. So you can, yeah, you'll see that it's really great what it's incoming. OK. Is that OK if I mention that on the g Yeah, no Twitter? problem. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Cool. Thanks. Uh, because that's not an announcement. That's uh, related to GSOC, but that's not a top-level announcement. 
Uh, that's important, but not important enough for being a, a VIP in the announcement section. Okay, so I'm moving to upcoming calendar. We will have a weekly release next week. So that will be the second release with GDK 17. And eventually that might be a fix up release if we see uh, uh, issues related to the GDK 17. We should be okay on our own, but we never know. Uh, 10 July, a new LTS release will be there. So important for you, Hervé, to mark on your calendar. Uh, because I would love to have your help just to check the Docker image port. If you cannot, that's not a blocker, but if you are there, I would prefer having you around to help uh, if we saw, uh, because if it, if, it, if it fails, for sure it will be just one shell line to fix. I'm sure of that. So that, that's why faster if you are there, we can push the hot fix and, and get, get on with it. Okay, do you do we have Jenkins advisories announced? I haven't checked before the meeting. We don't, that's a good thing. <laughs> In the upcoming three weeks, uh, we have two credentials that expire. Uh, one in two weeks and one in three weeks. Same uh, as last week, uh, when we checked, I still have to write issues or someone else, but we were uh, absolutely overwhelmed last week. Sorry for that. So new issues to add uh, again. Uh, I will take care of doing this unless someone is interested in uh, writing the issue and starting to uh, work on these elements. Uh, that one need to be worked on the next milestone. The second one can wait two weeks. Oh, no. No, maybe not. Maybe we should work on both of them. Let me add them immediately here on the to-do list. Here we are. Uh, I propose we jump out about the next major events and we continue with the task. Is that okay for everyone? Just a view on the budget. Uh, Azure CDF is on track for a 4.2K forecast. We have to watch it carefully. Uh, 4.2 is our target, but we, sh we shouldn't have more. That means a 4.3 bill. That's the same as last month. So we haven't decreased yet. Uh, eventually, Stefan is almost there. So eventually the actions of Stefan will be able to, to go in that direction. Uh, we have a risk on the new stats uh, website that Hervé is working on because we will add cost for the storage account and the new pods that will run the web service. So we will have to balance both. Uh, we'll have to watch it carefully. So we are on track, but we must be really careful. Any question for this one? Regarding the sponsored account, we have increased our consumption, which is a good. We are forecasted at 6K instead of 5K in May. Uh, right now we are at 3.6K consumed, so good thing. And we will accelerate the consumption in the two upcoming months because we need to use all of these credits before end of August. So good direction as expected, and we can even increase the consumption here. Digital Ocean is steady. We don't consume a lot of credits and it will accelerate during the, the autumn. And AWS is also uh, going steady. We should have 6.3, even 6K at the end of the month here. So 2K uh, less than last month, which is good and expected. Yeah, and, AW, um, just sorry, good. AWS, we submitted the donation request. No need to note this, but we submitted the donation request and they asked us, hey, why haven't you spent money the, from the, pre, oh. the current donation? And I explained because our donors, we have multiple donors and we have some of them that are time limited and we have to spend the time limited ones first. So I hope that they accept that, that explanation and still consider us for next year's donation. Will that make sense for us to eventually create a mirror on that account instead of the Azure one? I, uh, I, I get that it's a good point. Or Russian, 
Uh, for yes. Russian, we have, I think, AWS has Pol Poland uh, data center as well. It, that's, I think that's a very good, very good thought. Um, AWS or Azure either is fine. And for me, doing it on Azure has the benefit that we use money that we know expires, but doing on AWS gives us a bigger pool of money in a longer time. I'm not sure that we long-term actually want to be in the hosting mirrors business, but, but if we, until we get Yandex to do it or somebody else, that could pass also a positive message to Ostico that we are uh, thanking them and supporting them on their right. mirror service mission. Okay, I'm just mentioning that uh, aloud. On the issue for the Russian user, I will mention that we could use AWS and we will see. Is that okay for everyone? That's great. Thank you. Uh, let's get started now, unless you have other question about billing, cloud billing. One, two, three. Okay, no. So then continue. Issue we were able to finish last week. Uh, so we had two spam user removed. Thanks, Mark, for uh, keeping track of this. Uh, we had an LTS release last week. So of course, uh, one of our goal is to install such updates to the, plat the whole platform during the next 24 to 48 hours, which we did. Um, and then we had usual permission request for the Jenkins CI GitHub organization administrator. So no action for us, but part of our milestone. So uh, we make it explicit. Um, that's weird. The closed as not planned issue, we didn't had any. I believe we are missing a bullet here. Let me just update. Oh, that that would be impressive. We really did not do any closed as not planned this time. That's rare. We usually have something we have to close as not good. No spam this week. No spam this week. Good thing. <laughs> okay. Just about there was a little bit of spam, but I didn't create in a desk issue for that. Uh... A user uh, changed the Asini on old infra Shira issue on two of them. So uh, we don't care. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, oh, you good. Sure. Are you okay if I take just a minute on that one, Erva? Because I made the same choice on others that I saw where they had made the, they altered the assignment. That user, I didn't, did you ban that user? No, it was just two issue change. I didn't okay. thought it was. Uh, was any time from me. Thanks. Yeah, I actually confirmed it was more like 10 or 12 issues, maybe eight. Okay. But I, I, just still, received... I still didn't think it was worth banning them simply because I will watch if they do something that is 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 more harmful to content, then we ban them. Was was uh, was uh, was uh, were them all infra issue? I no, no, only, only two of them were yeah. infra issues. The others okay. were all Jenkins issues or Jenkins or website. It's like okay. assigning an issue to yourself is is flawed behavior if it's already resolved, but it's not flawed behavior that I think we need to immediately act to correct. Yeah. For that, I have a proposal. Uh, Mark, do you know in Jira if there is a way to make a project read only? Because there, I there is by archiving it, and so we could. I think we could archive. But when Daniel Beck looked at an attempt to archive, it wasn't. I'm not sure that it was worth the effort to do the archive process. For me, I I consider that a a spam attractor if somebody modifies an infra issue, it's a, a warning to me that they might be spamming us. Yep, absolutely. Honey, uh, honeypot, isn't that yeah, the word for honeypot, it? Honeypot, honeypot? exactly. exactly. Uh, but since infra project has issues that uh, have links to them on the internet, on different areas, that will be worth archiving, but or keeping it read only or doing something. Uh, um, I'm gonna ask the other uh, Jira administrator though, because maybe we could block uh, people for commenting and adding new issues at least. There might be permission scheme, such as a uh, read is uh, for any anyone, but uh, writing or assigning or rocking an issue is only for admins or something like that. 
Yeah, it, and it's a it's a good question. I've not. I'm certainly not a skilled enough JIRA administrator to recommend a preferred practice. I, I, you're right that there, there must be a way for us to reduce the incidence of this kind of thing on inactive issue reports. Thanks, Hervé, for the pointer. I didn't see this one. So yeah, useful, might be spam. OK, uh, so work in progress. I'm going to try it by importance. Most important one, update center migration. And though we might have to delay it a bit for safety concern, because we need time and a lot of people are busy. Uh, so we had a self-review inside the team. Uh, uh, I contacted the GenSec member privately, but they are, they are absolutely, absolutely overwhelmed. So uh, should we go on uh, telling them, OK, it's not the update center content, but it's publication that is impacted by this one. And we can proceed on this one. Should we wait a bit? I'm not sure. Um, I propose to wait one week more, and I'm going to do a formal and uh, uh, public, or at least a, a large and not private uh, communication and request to them. Is that OK for everyone? Yeah. Next week until we get back or from Jenkins Jensec. Mm. No problem here. As a reminder, the goal is to decrease the AWS costs and other benefits. Uh, but uh, given the recent changes. I would prefer taking time to continue onboarding Jay and having the GenSec team being able to sustain us, even if it means delaying the content. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Uh, then by priority, streamline the Maven versions across the infrastructure. Thanks Jay for the help on this one. So as we saw, the current release is using a new Maven release. The issue is not finished yet. I will take care of the two last items because it will be adding a comment on two source files. Uh, it's because we have tests or areas uh, on Puppet where we use the Dumi value. We could use a.b.c instead, and maybe I will do this. Um, we might have cleanup to do on trusted CI. Okay, to do trusted CI and Puppet light changes. So in we have a build tool on trusted CI that target old Maven versions. Um, there is no reason for us to use these latest Maven versions from, from back in time, because now everyone and everything is using 3.9. So we should only stick on the latest version on trusted CI to map to what we have on CI on Jenkins IO. So it's more a cleanup than really an upgrade or a, a, a complete change. Uh, we might have to check there. There is no pipeline specifying an older Maven version, but I believe uh, my last search didn't catch any. So uh, uh, that will be announced. But if you see an issue on trusted CI about Maven not found version, that's because you need to upgrade the Maven version of the pipeline. Good for everyone. So we continue having this issue on the milestones. Um, where is the other one? There is one regard. Oh, that's, yeah, drop GDK 11. That's one under my eyes. So dropping GDK 11 uh, is almost there. Release in progress. GDK 17 is there. So again, thanks, Jay, but not only. Thanks, everyone, for the review. Jay did the heavy lifting on update CLI. Uh, and then I handed over his work because we were time pressured. Uh, so that's a real team effort here, and I'm really happy with this. The issue will be closed once the release today will be finished. Issue will be closed once released. Just a note, we went on GDK 17 instead of 21. I've uh, wrote the arguments. Uh, we don't have strong argument for one choice or the other. Everyone had different uh, 
uh, advices, but all opinions were, uh, were cool, useful, and we learned a lot in the process. Um, now, changing to 21 is not a big effort. We have to change a YAML file and wait for the automated pull request to kick. So that's not justifying going GDK 21 immediately. Any question on this tool related to today's release? Okay, so good job, everyone. Next one, Stefan. The new private cluster, so we pay less on the CDF accounts on Azure. What's the spend way of? more on the sponsored one. Um, the the new cluster have been created and uh, is now added on the Kubernetes management uh, pipeline and it's working. Um, last step is um, using it to spawn new Jenkins agent directly from uh, infraci.com.jenkins.com.io, sorry. And um, it's almost there. Um, this morning I did the secrets and subs and credentials. So um, I think it should be done soon. I believe we should be able to use it on Infra CI for next milestone and eventually uh, removing the old one. Yeah, the aim is to get some savings. So so removing the old one. And we changed the issue, the the, um, the closure, the, the end of the issue will be when we start to save money on the, on the CDF account. Oh. Go ahead. Yes. Mark. Go ahead, Mark. So, so when the when we reach August thirty one, or we have finished with the, we've used all of the donation from Microsoft, whichever happens first, we'll switch this to another cluster. Great. Okay. Yeah, thanks. we will have to redo everything again with another cluster somewhere else. Great. Thanks. Or we use the same cluster as today. It's using private gates, so we can go back to the current yeah. states, which is fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. And then with spot instances, this one doesn't use spot instances because we can't. Exactly. We cannot, sorry. Not uh, when we'll reach end of the Azure sponsored credits, we'll go back to current state in private gates. Good point. That's worth writing it, so it will be quick to roll back. Uh, OK. Uh, next one, uh, which order, which order, which order? I'm looking. Uh, Hervé, about the new stats uh, repository for the GIS, is that for the GSOC, is that correct? It's a GSOC yes. project, this one, right? Yes. Um... I've completed the CI part. Uh, the new version is uh, built on ci.jenkins.io and on infra.ci.jenkins.io with pull request uh, preview on Netlify. Uh, I created a team uh, dedicated to this repository and uh, set uh, the GSOC student as reader, uh, which has the consequence of having the build on the infra CI that Jenkins that are not running uh, without any action from a uh, maintainer of the repo. So I'll, I'll see uh, to create a distinct job for previews that can run for uh, unallowed uh, users and trusted users. One for deployment. And, and is that a pattern that we've used on others like this, Hervé, or is that a new pattern the, that you're having to create? Uh, it's a pattern that I see more clearly now ah. that we probably should repli replicate on on other repo, depending on the case. It's It depends on the case. And so, yeah, on the context of what's needed. Yeah. But yeah, you might uh, need to, yeah, some other repo might need some review of the process about it. Ideally, any repo of a web service that is deployed in, from InfraCI. 
so oh. that excludes Jen Kinsayo, which is untrusted. That's another matter. However, uh, contributor spotlight stats, um, they are free, free to docs, five websites. Docs, docs, and and docs. Uh, well, ba basically, stories and yeah. all the new, all the new deploys are looking at using, should be considered to use this new pattern because of Minch. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I let you finish. So. No, no, I'm done. That was great. Okay. The, these new deploy, uh, websites, uh, uh, contributors, docs, we can uh, include stories too and stats. Uh, uh, have the same architectural pattern, and we are using file share for each of them currently. We might be able to, as it's uh, at, as all of them are static websites, we can do the same that we do for in the Docker Confluence data for the wiki repo, which is creating a Docker image with all uh, uh, based on engines with all content already included. So it will simplify the release and we won't need a file share anymore. Thank you, got it. This will reduce the cost that we discussed previously. You, you speak about merging the file shares? Sorry, I missed. Uh, no, 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 not missing, merging the file share using uh, Docker uh, image, including the static oh, content. Okay. And yeah, another discussion we had was to maybe sharing a premium file share between uh, some of these websites instead of having a distinct file share for each of them. Because uh, as in a standard, the standard version is five gigabytes minimum, which is already too much. And the premium is 100 gigabytes. The, the problem on this one is the, do we expect and allow multi-tenancy or not? If we have a shared yeah. resource between yeah. different websites, if one can deface one of these websites, they can deface all the websites at once. Uh, but that would simplify because we could only have uh, two Nginx pods, one big file share, and all virtual hosts coming up to these Nginx servers. So that's um, that's a balance to consider in the future. The maintenance effort here uh, for doing this will be huge, but the cost decrease will be helpful. So the proposal is that um, we, we discussed other solutions as Hervé explained. The Docker image is one. Uh, that's another kind of trade-off. Uh, we trade off slow, um, what looks like a slower deployment to production because you need, for each production deployment, you need to have the new Docker image, new tag, and then the publication on Kubernetes. But that gives us no need for a file share. We have standalone and stateless pods. Everything is inside the Docker file. And we give observability and visibility to the maintainer because they see the pull request with the new image version. So it's easier for them to know is the new version online or not. That's, even, a yeah. Yeah, that's a different pattern. Don't forget, Hervé, to double check with Chris Stern uh, yeah. that they are OK for that. Because uh, if you want a high rate of change, that might need to organization for the GSOC student. And that one can be hard for Chris to manage because he has multiple GSOC and a lot of work. So that's something yeah. to balance. Yeah, and that can that can come later. We can, as discussed, we can follow my initial plan with a file share and then improve that in yep. the second part. When, yeah, as you said, when, for example, when Chris is a bit less busy. Yeah. To get started. Um, about the file share, Hervé, uh, you will be responsible to check carefully the costs. Especially there is an unknown here. It's hard to take a decision to get another premium share or use a standard file share for this new service because we don't know in advance the amount of requests that will hit that file share. So I, I have no problem of getting one or the other. I don't see a strong argument, but that means you have to be careful if you start with standard because the cost is unknown. With a premium, we know the cost, 
but it can be high because you need to provision 100 gigabyte again. Right. It's it's unknown and possibly low, or maybe high, or known high. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the compromise there, and that's a that's not an especially attractive compromise. It's either pay a known high amount or a possibly lower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, not that high. It's not that high. It's over provision, but it's not that high. It's like 30 bucks per month. The, ah. the alert is when the monthly budget is over, that's it? No, no, you have to do linear exp <laughs> linear. That was a good one. <laughs> good try. <laughs> so um, I think one week will be sufficient for you to do extrapolation because the cost won't come from serving requests. That's just, I mean, everything is loaded in memory on Nginx and the amount of data is two megabytes for this website. So you will have a bunch of requests initially, it's in memory and sometimes it's uncached, but that will be served from memory. However, the um, that might be the same as update center. If we update statistic every day, that might be a cost because one update is one file uploaded uh, to the Blobix first uh, stuff. Uh, it's not Blobix first anymore, but one file uploaded on a file share is four to five transaction requests. There is a read, there is a, the, the head, read, write, again, read for confirming the two, the two times commit, and there is a fifth one related to the listing and permissions. So writing, updating one file is five transactions. So if you update, uh, like update center, 10 every three minutes, then you start to have a lot of hits on the file share. That's why we have to to serve very carefully. But after one week, once the developer worked and we have the usual process, you will have an idea of the request. Standard. Let's watch watch the budget. Any other question or things to add on the Jenkins Start project? Is that still okay for you, Hervé, to continue working on this one on the upcoming week, given eventual other tasks? Okay, cool. Um, we have, let's get started with ACP timing out. So thank, uh, Basil and Mark mentioned uh, ACP errors on builds lately. Uh, there were two kinds of errors. HTTP 502 related to DNS issues internally. Um, so that one should not happen anymore, but that has to be watched. Uh, should not happen anymore. So this morning I was able to track the error message related to an issue with the Ubuntu version that was used on the node. But since then, we have changed the base operating system, thanks to Stefan, to Azure Linux. And that problem in Azure Linux uh, is related to the way Azure DNS server are, are managed, the private DNS. So the DNS server was piled uh, and considering being dedosed by the Ubuntu machine due to an RFC implementation, implementation of the bind client in Ubuntu. But now with Azure, that should be okay because they built the integrated DNS. So we'll see uh, Azure Linux DNS clients uh, behaves better than Ubuntu. The other one, I don't know. Timeout requests that Basil mentioned on the bomb builds could have a lot of causes. Um, I'm annoyed for, by this one because um, no errors seen on network, ACP, or, Kub or Kubernetes. Absolutely no errors, no metrics. No, we see the peak of activity, but that's minor. That's two percent increase in load on the ACP. But the so, ACP never received the connection and never dropped any connections. So no, no message in any of the server side logs. The consumer. Is the, is the only place we got that message where it says on the consumer side, the CI Jenkins IO agent had a problem. Oh dear, okay, so so that's even more challenging then to find where the, okay, well, 
I have not seen it. I have not seen it recently. So maybe I hope that it goes away and hides. Yep, I've seen that kind of error when um, the whole uh, what's the name CNI uh, network driver on Docker Swarm or Kubernetes is failing and starts dropping connection. Since it's an overlay encrypted network, the kernels do not mention the errors. So as such, usual monitoring tool, such Datadog in our case, uh, cannot say, hey, I see traces of dropped connection because it's encrypted in a virtual network. So they cannot have access to that information, which means either we have to check if Datadog is able to carefully monitor the overlay network. Uh, in that case, we are using a new CNI network, a recent one from Azure, less than one year. So maybe they have word behavior. Um, that can be impacted by Azure Linux as well because the kernel and the, t the, the network stack changed and the new one are optimized. Yeah, and then the um, fact we changed yeah. that reset the memory and everything. So not seeing a, a, um, error anymore for, for a time frame is normal because yep. of the reboot. And seeing any more error for now. Let's watch until next week. So I'm going to add an issue uh, comment and I will uh, give details to Basil, but uh, Mark or anyone, if you see these kind of errors, we will need to search further. Um, one of the constant when we see such ACP errors, every time it's during a bomb builds, the bomb builds suddenly increase the pressure on the ACP system and all other elements. Something that could be tried to really remove the theory of um, a weak ACP backend service, we could increase horizontally and vertically the ACP pods if we see the error happen and start again until it disappear. If errors disappear, that means that scaling horizontally and vertically helps. And that might be a capacity, not directly ACP, but the underlying system, such as Kubernetes. If it's not, then that means we have something else on the client side. That could also be Kubernetes, as uh, Mark mentioned. So that will be a surprise. <laughs> I don't have anything else because I cannot uh, find traces, logs, or metrics related to that, except that it didn't work when it was in error. Next subject is also support level one. Uh, we have a user enabled to publish their plugin with a manual release. Uh, Mark, I might need help. Yeah, and I apologize. Uh, you had asked for my help last week, and I had not given it. Let me let me see if I can help this week on it. I I think his the comments from the the contributor hint to me that we need to look more carefully at the at the source code of the repository. So let me take yeah. that on as as it's a good a good place for some checks. I agree. I see there were there were th there is something weird, Mark. Just to note is that. The error happened when it, they performed the release because uh, it looks like that Maven tried to resolve the dependency in the incremental plugin repository. But the list from the effective POM make the incremental to be last. However, it's a Schrodinger change because when, as soon as you run the effective POM, the dependency, which is the Maven HPI plugin, is search on the first of the list of plugin repository and downloaded with success, which then you can perform the release. So there is a dependency issue, but that hints me there is a misconfiguration uh, between incremental enablement, the POM parent version. I tried the latest POM parent for plugins, but the error is still present. Hmm. And each time the effective POMs is uh, successful and say, hey, that's the list, and I was able to successfully use it. So since I'm not really at ease with all the steps, I believe there is something around the incremental part because now his error is um, is having an execution a failure a failure during the um, uh, the execution of the incremental incrementalify. That's hard to say incrementalify process, but okay, since but... Sorry, so uh, that really means it needs analysis because incrementalify shouldn't be executed at all. 
Exactly. It's, so, it should so be only some, for CD process, right? Right. That's that's <laughs> not so. There's there's something. That, this needs more looking. Yes. Yeah. And that's where I think it's just I don't I don't want to point things at the user because it looks like they really don't understand. They try to manually release the plugin. Why they should move to CD if they have these two pull requests from Jesse and Alexander? Right. So there might be a developer communication problem here. Maybe Jean-Marc, Bruno, you, someone at ease with communicating with them could help, but that's absolutely outside the infrastructure area now. Now mm -hmm. we are sure. Um, so let me write his nice first name. I'm assuming that you can speak in French with him. Because <laughs> we share the same one. <laughs> yes. I think I think what I detect there is a cultural bias. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Got more uh, projects. Incremental misconfiguration or misusage. Is that okay uh, for you, Mark, to lead that, even if it's delegating to someone else? But uh, yes, to... yes, okay. absolutely. We're at that point where. That I should have done what I said I would do last week. It's time to do what I said I'd do. Yes. As it is communication with developer. I, I could have dig up further, but we are a bit overloaded. So since it's now right. outside this, our area. That, that's exactly a place where I can be useful. Let's let me be useful because there are so many of these things that I can't help. So that's that's great. Let me help with the things I can. Thanks. Eddie, is there any more question on this one? One, two, three. Okay, no. Next issue, Hervé, a GSOC project for you again. What's the status on the docs, Jenkins? Are you? No, I think, or it's no, stats. Like, no, this is stats, right? Uh, yeah, this is stats. Uh, oh, I, we, sorry. We, yeah, we. Yeah, sorry, I, I exchanged. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my bad. I mixed up two lines. You were not alone. <laughs> no worries. Uh, let's go for John Mark work since you started uh, working on it Friday. So that one is yeah. moving the John Marks and Bruno repositories around Jenkins stat generation. They had their own repositories and it has to be owned by Jenkins infra organization. To unlock uh... Christian pull request on contributors uh, website to add uh, some queue uh, box uh, in the footer. Uh, it was pulling at build time uh, data from external organization. So I yeah um, I started the migration of Tomac repository and I now have to unlock him by uh, enabling again the tab publication from the GitHub action. It needs some configuration of secrets to the repository and maybe something I don't know yet, but I'll see. Okay, so that means uh, we need now to unblock because I understand that uh, John Mark is blocked. Uh, there are different areas and new issues that we will see on the triage related to that change. Uh, so we will cool treat them. We, uh, I can help at least on the token part if you want, Hervé. It's okay I, for yeah. me to spend time unless uh, you want to take care of it. Uh, yeah, I will see. The way. Yeah, I'll discuss that with you. Uh, we have to dis to decide who okay. work on so, which one uh, now. I, 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 uh, okay, I'll uh, you'll show me what I need to have as token. I saw what was uh, okay. No, set sorry, up in the sorry, I misexpressed. Either you decide to work on it, or I work on it. But yeah, I decide to work on it, and you okay, propose your help for tokens. So I was about to say that I saw what was configured in the other. I won't have time Jenkins to work on it if you plan to work on it. I need to know because if 
I have I to spend know, I, time sorry. on that topic, either helping you, or walking. Okay, I will okay. need to Can you reformulate what you proposed at the first? Because I'm not sure I understood correctly, you said. Okay. So uh, the problem is there is a CI CD process that needs to deploy the released artifacts in the Homebrew tap repository, which mm -hmm. is a distinct repository. It's running yeah. on GitHub Actions and the GitHub underscore token environment variable used inside the GitHub action, it can only be scoped to the current repository. So since the goal is to publish the Ombro tab to a second repository, even if it's the same organization, you need a different credential. That's how GitHub action work and you cannot change that. So that's why on the others, we should, we, we set up years ago, a GitHub application installed on the destination and it has a couple of credentials and we use a GitHub action named Tidbeck something that generates a second token only on the main branch, not on pull request by using the secrets from organization. So these secrets come from the GitHub application installation. You can restrict which repository has access to them. And so when it's on the main branch, you generate the Ombro tap with go releaser and then go releaser use the one hour valid token generated by Tidbex. So what you have to do is to check which GitHub application is allowed and installed on the Homebrew tab, check the secret and provide this secret uh, inside the new workflow on Jean-Marc repository, and that should be good enough. Okay, many thanks. I have all I need to work on this. That's okay, smart. cool. Uh, I can spend some time if we're unblocked because that's a priority to yeah. unblock your mark. But I let just... you know. But with how you explain right now, and I activated the transcript, so I'll reproduce in the issue. Okay. Just you... just for information, Jean Marc and I already wrote this information in the issues. So you always okay. you already have the information on the issue, and you can find it on documentation. And as you proposed. The two other command line Jenkins version and UC used to have these uh, these systems. Okay, so but, we uh, agree yeah. as yeah we agree. I'm working on it and I okay. should have everything I need and I let you know if I'm blocked. Cool, cool. From GMM, uh, RV takes care of this. Okay. Um, be careful to communicate carefully because your mark don't have a lot of days and you need to know what, okay? Yeah. Uh, Stefan, do we agree that the migration of the storage account have been put on hold for now? Yes, we agree. Is it still on hold for the upcoming milestone? No, I will try to. Okay. Work on it. On the upcoming milestone was an old okay uh, a word about gdk 21 agents uh thanks to, for team we have solved the, the inbound agents for windows so inbound and ssh as your virtual machines for linux are okay inbound agents as your virtual machine windows is okay so the last step for this issue before starting to really work on it is to have a proof of concept of Windows SSH uh, launcher for Azure VM engines. The goal is again be able, being able to provide environment variable Java home and change the path on the agent process and every subsequent uh, shell process executed by pipelines. So we can have a different GDK for agent and for the builds that will allow providing the Maven 21 or Maven 17 on trusted and third virtual machines. Um, so Linux SSH are ready to go. Windows inbound, thanks to Teams uh, pointers, we have a an easy solution with the win as the way system. Next step, check a solution for Windows SSH agent. Then 
code and deploy. So the code and deploy port could be an interesting task for Jay once we will have finished kubectl 1.28, if everything goes according to the plans, because it's in the uh, in a good area uh, for him because it's puppet code, almost uh, that's only puppet code and templating. So that's close to something you already did, Jay. However, uh, we will first need to have the proof of concept that I need to build here, of course, details. And we will need to have you learn a bit more about Jenkins agent methods. So that will be easy for you to catch the work. However, uh, it's easy for you to work on that code and test it locally with the local Vagrant virtual machine. So that will let you some autonomy and then the deployment part will be done with someone from the team with you pairing as, as usual. So no pressure on this one. Uh, for now, I'm working on the POC and I don't expect any action from anyone. But in the upcoming weeks, that might be a task for Jay. OK, for everyone. Uh, last one, report Jenkins IO. The goal is still to add automatically the outbound IP. Uh, I had to learn how is the JSON generation worked. So uh, Hervé and then Stefan helped me on these topics. Uh, we will have a first pull request for changing some element on the shell code to make it portable and testable. Um, one note, the current code works very well. Ostico mirror has already been automati uh, automatically added on the API. So the current work is working very well. Congrats, guys. And finally, a second pull request will add automatically the outbound IP from the export we have uh, we have added on the past weeks. So, uh, whip, um, which is a shell portability. Next step: add get Jenkins IO section for outbound IPs. Do you have other questions on this topic? Okay, so all of these are going to the next milestone. Um, new topics. I've created the a cube 1.28 issue. So Stefan and Jay, that will be assigned to you. <laughs> um, oh. Stefan and uh, Jay. Just a reminder. Uh, to do kubectl 1.28. So that one, I've tried to add as much details as possible. I hope I didn't uh, miss any. Jay, you can start working anytime you want on the update CLI update, because on the one we checked together, it's an update CLI manifest. And you have one line to change. If you remember, if you don't remember or are not sure, wait for Stefan uh, for Thursday. And uh, then Stefan will uh, walk with you Thursday and Friday. On... You told me I just have to, to bring some popcorn and then we'll watch Jay walking. I mean, I missed it too. <laughs> That's a low one. <laughs> Fair. Watch uh, the production no... burn. <laughs> Let's watch the production burn and deploy on Friday afternoon, of course. Otherwise, it's not really production. <laughs> um, no time pressure. The reason, uh, multiple reasons for having Stefan working with you, Jay. As I told you first, because uh, he has a cluster to upgrade on 1.28 soon. We don't know who will upgrade the other clusters, but right now, between that tool, as a preparation, reading the Kubernetes changelog, that's a task that might be too hard for you, Jay, right now, because you never used Kubernetes, as far as I can tell. So it's reading the changelog so yeah, might not be, I mean, that will be cognitive overload. If I may give you a recommendation, forget about the changelog for this one. You will have plenty of changelog and times for that. But the kubectl version is an easy one, though. So I propose you go both of you in that direction on the next milestone. So as I say, it's two issues for me to create uh, and uh, updating uh, regarding credential. 
Stéphane, uh, you let me know, but since you have the migrate storage, I believe uh, if we have time, we start working on them. Otherwise, I will take them uh, most probably Friday morning for me. You let me know. Uh, yes, let you know. Um, so we spoke about Chira project and now triage. Do we have new issues? So with before the... before you switch to triage, I have one more. I have one more that I need help on. I apologize yes. that I didn't ask it before. I'm asking no it now, acknowledging that it's an unknown. The Linux Foundation provides a system for the Jenkins project called DevStats. Uh, DevStats is used to to assess the health of the project. We use it to see how many contributors we have, et cetera. All right, so that's the background. Um, it's how is the project doing? They are now switching to a new system called Insights. So LFX Insights. And LFX Insights is needs access to the uh, Jenkins organization in some way. And they've asked for our help to get that access. So it uses the GitHub organizations some way, but I am not confident that I know the right questions to ask, permissions, et cetera, how to assess, is this a reasonable thing for us to allow them to do, or is it not a reasonable thing. And so they've asked for a meeting with me. And I've realized that if I have that meeting with them, I will just inform them that I don't understand and that won't be good enough. So I need, is this something where I need to involve a member of the security team and the infra team or is the infra team enough? What's, what's your sense? Uh, I think both, uh, we need both uh, because I'm not sure if they will have access to the Jenkins infra, I'm not sure if it's it, if it has a meaning for their. Uh, that's a question worth discussing with them. Do we care about the project yields and metric from Jenkins infra organization? And since I'm not admin, none of us are on the Jenkins CI org. Having Tim or Daniel or something with administration on the other could be important. Uh, there might be less risk on the other, but yeah. We need to see with them uh, what is the meaning, what kind of information they need and permissions. Good. Okay. So so what I will do is I will propose a, a meeting with a representative from Jenkins Security and be sure that a person in the meeting also has GitHub organization admin permission and comprehension for the Jenkins CI organization in addition to Jenkins Infra. That yeah. way, because... Damien, in, in the infra team, we have org admin for Jenkins-infra. But I think you just said we don't actually have org admin permission for Jenkins CI. That is other, exactly. other administrators. Good. Okay, that's great. So that, that gives a very compelling reason why, uh, why I can, can do it that way. Great. Okay. And, and I don't, I think since it's measurements that they're taking, I think all they want is read permission. But... And I, I don't want to make that guess be a, a terrible decision. Let's let's have the discussion with them to that, be sure we understand and they understand. At first sight, that might that makes sense, but that's a conceptual view. Uh, technically, we also need an exhaustive list of the exact permission so we can review. Uh, because yeah, good question. Because as Hervé is pointing, we have some LFX. I'm not sure if it's insight or not. Things added that come from a moment where Oleg had admin permission on Jenkins Infra and some permission on the, um, on the Jenkins uh, Infra are, yeah, uh, triggered long discussions. Hervé, Good. the team in Jenkins Infra is just, uh, is only um, a way just to copying communicate. Just them. Yeah, yeah exactly. copying them or in LDesk, for example. But yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So say that again. Hervé, should no, I create a help desk ticket for no, this no, to track no, it? No, 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 sorry. Oh. Uh, Hervé was uh, writing a point about uh, uh, mentioning that we can ping Jenkins CI admin through a team on Jenkins Infra. We have a team where oh. we have added the admin to ping them if, if we need. Got uh, it. Thank you. Okay. So we have a way to communicate. 
uh, with the whole group of Jenkins CI GitHub organization admins through this great you know, help you. desk uh, issue. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll command in Jenkins Safra repository, but yeah, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's his teams, it doesn't work in when you're uh, using it in Jenkins CI repository commands. Exactly. Or body. So worth creating an help desk issue if it's okay for everyone and mention them through that medium in the issue. Is that okay for everyone? The goal is okay. also to keep track of that discussion. Yes, great. Cool. Uh, anything else on the top level topics? Okay, so let's have a quick look on the triage issue. We have uh, three issues open by Jean-Marc. So I believe the three of them will, uh, will be for Hervé. That's a gift. <laughs> Um, uh, issues by GMM about contributor stats. Let me write them, the three of them, four, four, two. And the last one, okay. So this one will be on the new milestone. Uh, Hervé, I let you the judge of the order of on how you, do you want to solve these issues? Uh, the other three age are GDK21 related. We don't want to work on this topic. We already have the agent build tool. That's already one of this topic, which is not three age. But I don't see new issues. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Is there another topic? No? Okay. So then it's already late for everyone. So let's stop the meeting. I'm, stop I'm stopping screen share. I'm stopping recording and see you next week. Bye-bye.